coast into the rest of the way home. Folks, we need to be led. We need to be fed. And our Bibles need to be read. And they need to be heeded. And I'm glad tonight to be in the house of God. I have several prayer requests that I'm going to bring to you in just a moment. And I'm going to bring them to you in reverse order. But before I do that, I just want to read Psalm 91. There's 16 verses here. The Bible says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him will I trust, surely. He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither Shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling? For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Thou shalt bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon. Thou shalt trample under feet, because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Have you ever thought about God's nine one one. Have you ever thought about that? God's nine one one. It was on September the eleventh, nine month, eleventh day in two thousand and one that America, in many ways, changed forever. It's hard to believe that we're coming up on twenty years from that date. I'll say more as we get closer to it, but the Lord's put it on my heart. To not forget that time. Not to ever, ever, ever forget that time. I'm afraid that a lot of forgetfulness has already taken place. But on September the 11th, this coming September the 11th, it'll be a Saturday morning. And it'll be about 8.30. We're going to have fire trucks and police cars and public safety people out here and I'm going to invite the whole city to come for just about a 20 minute service and I realize and I just want to go ahead and say please don't tell me how Saturday's your only day off and you need to sleep late folks we need to wake up and we need to get here And we need to cry out to God on that day. How many of you remember where you were at on 911? Everybody in this room does. Everybody in this room does. Nine one one is the emergency number, of course. But before there was a nine one one, there was a nine one verse one. And it's found right here in Psalm ninety one. Verse 1, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I want to ask you tonight, do you have a secret place?
place? Do you have a secret place? A place where you go to get along with God on a daily basis. I want to say something to you tonight. One person in their secret place can make more of a difference from God and for God in this world than a hundred out just hanging out. One person in their secret place can make a difference for God. I was blessed by the Lord to have had a granny who knew how to get to her secret place. She died in 2008. She was 88 years old. Her birthday was August the 1st. If she had lived, she, she would have just turned 101 years old. But she knew how to go to her secret place. And I'm telling you, our family is still seeing God do things because of the time that she spent in her secret place. I pray tonight you'll learn, if you don't know already, the power of having a secret place place that's nine one one and then I want you to look at verses 15 and 16 the Bible says he shall call upon me who that man or that woman who has discovered their secret place did you know tonight God still hears and answers prayer not just always like we ask him to not always like we think he's going to I prayed about something today, had some prayer partners praying with me about something today. And what we were asking to happen didn't happen the way we asked for it to happen. But you know what? I'm confident that God heard us and that he will answer it even yet still in his own way, in his own time. God says, if you call upon me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. And then verse 16, this is special tonight with long life. Will I satisfy him in my salvation? Tonight I want you to remember in prayer Lee Templeton. Many of you know Lee. He used to run um, and own and operate the Calabash Express here in town. Lee's a friend of, of mine and Deb's and has been a long, long time. He had another heart attack, uh, they think. And uh, today in the hospital they put another stent in his, in his heart. He called me right before that procedure. And to ask that we pray for him. Also, tonight I want you to remember uh, Sally Lemons. Uh, Sally comes here. Uh, you know Sally. She's here all the time. She's especially here at prayer meeting. Sally fell and broke her shoulder. She's in a lot of pain. Please, please, please pray for Sally. Also, Rebecca Rutland is Vonda's daughter. She's making progress. I'd ask tonight that you remember her in your prayer. How many of you have a lost person you would love to see get saved? Somebody you know of. Somebody. I want to ask you, are you willing to let that be your one person? That one person. Everybody ought to have at least one person that they would be willing for God to do whatever it takes to get them saved. That might even mean using you or somebody else. You be praying tonight for that one person. But a very special request tonight comes to me in prayer. And I want to share this with you. And in just a moment, I'm going to invite you to come. And uh, usually, it's at the end of the service when we stand at the altar, but tonight we're going to do it in reverse. We're going to come and stand together from one side of the altar to the other, and we're going to pray one particular request. Don Wilton, who's the pastor of First Baptist Church in Spartanburg, been there a long, long time, a good man, a good, good Bible preacher. Just a couple of hours ago, he posted on Twitter. I follow him on Twitter, and uh, he said, Please. Please pray for my son, Rob. He's, I think, a little bit older than Dwight, somewhere in his mid to late 30s. He has COVID. Dr. Wilton said that uh, he's very low. He's in the emergency room, and he's not 
doing well and he asked that we pray and I replied to Dr. Wilton and I said I promise you at his vineyard tonight we'll be praying at 7 o'clock I can't help but believe this is the verse God wants us to claim for Rob Wilton with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation you see that could be one of my kids that could be one of your kids why well, used to not know what she's talking about when my mother said no matter how old they get those are still your kids so tonight I want to ask you I want to invite you if you're physically able to come and just stand with me here in this altar could we do that right now Jason why don't you sing as they're coming Let's just Praise God from line up. Whom all from sing with him. Praise him, all creatures here below. Sing it, sing it, church. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father. Son and Holy Ghost. Now that was the warm up verse. Let's sing that again. Let's sing that to the Lord. It's called the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Sing it like a choir. Y'all make room for them, Angie. Y'all come on down through here. Come on in here, Vince. Nikki. Glad to see you. The Bible says that the disciples came to Jesus and they said, Lord, teach us to pray, even as John the Baptist also taught his disciples to pray. And Jesus said, when you pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, even as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. Blessed be the Lord, God of this universe, that tonight he still hears and he still answers prayer. We had several of you who just came in after I made this request. Dr. Don Wilton, pastor of First Baptist Church in Spartanburg, has a son. His name's Rob, and he is, he is critically ill, very, very low with the COVID virus. And he's in the emergency room. And tonight, we want to run with emergence. And we want to run with urgency. In a time of prayer, we want to cry out to God. And all of these other needs that I've mentioned here tonight. Is there anybody who would just like to pray? Anybody at all? You say, I can't believe you're just opening that up. See, here's the beauty of it. And there's times that I wouldn't just open it up. There's times you, you, you've, got to, you've got to be discerning. But I want to I want to I want to just make this point. It's not just those on the platform who can pray. I want you to know if you're washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have access to the throne room of God's mercy and God's grace. Did you raise your hand to pray? Okay, Johnny. I'm going to hand this microphone to you and you lead us and you pray for this boy, okay? His name's Rob. You pray for him. Go ahead. You pray for us. Dear God, as we come to you tonight, 
undeserving of everything you do for us. But, God, you find a way to do it for us. If long we stick with you, we don't have any problems. And bless this Don with all your might, Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's low. And he can't, he can't get up. So will you help him pour your blessings out on him, Lord, like you never have before. Mm -hmm. And his daddy, I know he's worried about him. But pray your blessings out on him, too. And God, pray your blessings out on this church. It's a great church, Lord. It's coming. It's coming to be a greater church. And we're coming to have greater people. Not that we ain't got greater people now, but this is going to be big one day. Big. Big. Nobody's arrived yet, but we're working on it. And we want you to bless the troops. We want you to bless the first responders. And we, God, we also want you to bless everybody. Everybody needs a blessing every day. And God, I ask this name, I ask this prayer in your special name. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. No, sir, thank you. Thank you for praying, Johnny. Is everybody okay? Everybody okay? Everybody feeling good? Nobody's about to collapse or anything. Everybody good? The Lord just put it on my heart. Billy, time and time again, we have, we have prayed for people to come from the north, south, east, and west. And we need to continue to pray in that vein. But I want you to pray also, Billy, that the Lord would, when we leave here, we would go in all the different directions. And uh, that, that, we would, that we would be walking, talking, demonstration of Great Commission Christian. Don't you want to be a part of a church that makes a great commotion about the Great Commission of Jesus Christ and a daily demonstration of being a Great Commission Christian? There was an old preacher years ago. His name was Vance Havner. He's a great writer. Anything you can get your hands on that Vance Havner ever wrote is worth reading. He asked this question. He wrote a book one time called Why Can't We Just Be Christians? Leave her alone. Why she's just talking. I, I'm used to that by now. <laughs> you do the best you can with her, don't you? And will you just you just keep up the good work? My hat's off to you. But why can't we just be Christians? Well, that's that's pretty powerful. Billy, would you pray? Thank you for this evening, Lord, that you set aside for us to, to gather together, Lord, and Lord, just to worship you, uh, but to also lift up our petitions. And Lord, uh, we have prayed so many times mm -hmm. that we send folks from the north, south, east, and west, and God, you've been faithful. Mm -hmm. Lord, you've answered that prayer. But boy, oh boy, would you just speak a word through our under-shepherd to all of us. But Lord... Take the gospel east and west. Mm -hmm. Lord, let us not be ashamed. Be anybody else's testimony but our own. Wow. Lord, what you've done in our life through the blood of Jesus Christ, it can have that same effect on any lost person that we know. And all we have to do is tell them what Jesus did for us. And he's willing and able to do that exact same thing for them. God, give us courage. Lord, give us boldness in these last days, God, to proclaim your story, your, your son's story. God, there's just, each of us have a, a lost family member, and boy, just one came to my mind earlier that's, uh, God, give me enough compassion, give me enough love that I can set aside some time, Lord, just to tell him what you've done for me, what you've done for my family. And God, 
once we sow those seeds, that's all you've ever asked us to do. Mm -hmm. And God, you will add and you will water. And Lord, we can just stand back maybe two weeks from now, maybe two years from now, maybe ten years from now, Lord. And sometimes you allow us to see your work and how beautiful it is in our sight. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you. And uh, again, I just pray, Lord, that each of us would be that spear that goes into the north, south, and east, and west. Amen. Just to proclaim the message of hope to a lost and dying world. Lord, I love you. I thank you. And I just am amazed by you every day. And I give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to have one more prayer. Sonny Bird, would you pray tonight after Jason leads us in, in some songs? I'm going, to, I'm going to just read the Word of God. Folks, I've never been more encouraged over the, the authority of Scripture and over the sufficiency of Scripture than I am tonight, than I am at this place in my life. We're going to just open up the Word of God and we're going to read it. And uh, the Lord's really, really put something on my heart. And I, and I don't have the green light to share it with you yet. But it has to do with reading the Bible through. And it has to do with reading it in public. And it has to do with reading it on Wednesday night. And it has to do with one very interesting book of the Bible. The one that people are scared to death to read. But they love to talk about it. So I'm not, I'm not going to tell you which one it is. But I'll give you a hint. It's the last book of the Bible. That's all I can tell you. But we're going to get there very, very soon. I've been, I've been praying and waiting on a green light to go to that book of the Bible for 16 years. And uh, we're very excited about that. But Sonny Burr, would you just pray right now that the Lord would help us? And as you pray... For what happens here tonight, I, I want to add a name to that list. Mike Whitfield. Mike um, is, is exploring some, some possibilities as far as his physical health is concerned. We, we prayed for Mike for a long time. And some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you don't. But just believe me and trust me. Um, we pray the Lord has, would add years to his life. And we pray the Lord would add life to his years. But uh, he's seeing the doctor about some things in, in these coming days. So you pray for him and pray for them and everybody involved. Father God, thank you for your son, Jesus. Lord, thank you for loving us. Lord, we know that you created all things that exist. Mm -hmm. You sustained everything with your infinite wisdom and power. Yet you invite us to come to you boldly in prayer with the expectation Amen. that you'll hear and answer us. Help us, Father God, to take full advantage of this privilege. And Father God, I ask you to prompt us to pray for those who yet have experienced your love and grace, saving grace. And Father God, I ask you to move us to the front line of this battle. Mm -hmm. And Father God, I pray for Mike Whitfield. I lift him unto you right now for healing. Pray, Father God, for the doctors and the nurses and all the medicines that you provide. Lord, I pray you touch him and bring him out of this situation. And thank you, Lord, for loving us. Lord, don't forget to enlarge our tents here in mm. Haven. In Jesus' name. Mm. Amen. Amen. The last part of what he prayed about enlarging our tents. Uh, we're, I want to report to you tonight. We're moving forward on that vision. I've never been more encouraged in my life than I am right now. I don't know how God's going to do it. I was telling somebody today. They, they were, I, I forget where I was at. saw somebody. They said... How's the church doing? It was at the TV station. I went and pre-taped a, a nightline. And somebody said, how's the church doing? Are you, are you growing? Are you expanded? I said, to God be the glory, we're going out. He said, seriously? I said, yeah, we're, we're going toward the road. He said, really? I said, yeah. And I said, we already got the money. He said, you're kidding. I said, no. I said, we just don't know where it's at. <laughs> but God does. You know why? Because his name is Jehovah Jireh. The Lord's provision will be seen. So, Sonny, before you say amen again, you just thank the Lord on behalf of all these people that this is his church, it is his vineyard, 
And every project is his project. And we just have to report for duty. Amen? Would you pray? Father God, thank you again for his vineyard. Thank you for everyone that's here tonight. Lord, I pray you you touch each one, each family, Lord. I pray you continue to bless this uh, church, Lord. Continue to add it. Help it to always be a soul-saving station and mm. a soul-healing station for the glory of God. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord praise tonight. Could you do that? You can go on back to your seat, and you can sit down. How about that? You can sit down. I heard Mark Lowry say that he still loves the Lord as much as he's ever loved the Lord. He said he even loves the Lord more than he's ever loved the Lord. But he says he thinks that you can love the Lord sitting down too. Amen. And that's all right. While you're being seated tonight, Jason, why don't you lead us in a couple of songs? Sing this. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Our Father everlasting, the all-created one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior, I believe in God our Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one, I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. Our judge and our defender suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious life. Forever seated high. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say, nobody went to Sunday school? Fine. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, so. Let them say so. Thank you, Pastor. How many of you are redeemed tonight? How do you feel about it? Glory to him. This is our chance to say so. Let's do it. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. For I believe in the name of Jesus. For I believe in the name of Jesus. Amen. 
Well, I praise the Lord tonight that uh, we sang the doxology. I've, 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 heard, uh, I've heard some of these preachers, one in particular comes to my mind, uh, get in a big way preaching and making fun of the doxology, calling it high church, folks. Call it whatever you want to, but that is doctrine. That is doctrine, the doctrine of a triune God. And that what we just sang is a doctrine of a triune God. You see, you take the Trinity out of the Bible, you take out one of the most important doctrines from the Scripture. And it would affect our salvation, our justification, our sanctification, and our glorification. But thank God tonight for Bible doctrine. Be leery and be weary of anybody who comes to you telling the multitude that doctrine really doesn't matter. Because it does matter, y'all. It does matter. Doctrine is what we believe. And what we believe affects how we behave. So thank you. And thank God. And thank Chris. And thank our singers who sing songs that are from the scripture. Praise the Lord. Father God, would you help me now even for the next few minutes as we look into your word. I pray God that your people would be encouraged. And even those who are watching tonight by way of live stream, I pray that uh, they'd reach over there off of the table or off of the desk or back there off of the nightstand. Yeah, just go ahead and walk on back there and get it and get their Bible and read along with me. Tonight, I thank you, Lord, that the grass withers, the flower fades, but it's the word of the Lord that endures forever and ever. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want you to turn with me tonight to Psalm. We're going to go back to Psalm 116. Last week we looked at, uh, I think it's Psalm 71 or 72. Psalm 71. Tonight we're going to go to Psalm 116. I'm excited about what we're going to read tonight because there's something in here that is, that is going to help somebody. And uh, this tonight encourages me because it's going to encourage you. Psalm 116. I'm going to read Psalm 117 as well. And uh, I may even get into some of Psalm 118, I am uh, thankful tonight for the word of God and know that it will never come back unto him void or vain without accomplishing what he intends for it to accomplish. I have been uh, remodeling my study, I've been straightening it out, I've been cleaning it out and I'm not putting the blame on Debbie because I've got more sense than that but after she had her accident and her trip to the hospital uh, basically anything that came to me I just sat it in my study and it was a mess and if you think mess is an overstatement uh, it probably is a, a great understatement in fact it looked like a scud missile had hit it, but I'm in the process of, of cleaning it up, and I've thrown a lot of stuff away, and I've been able to reorganize some things, and I'm not there yet. In fact, I took Deb by the study a while ago. We don't have banks tonight, and uh, boy, we miss him. It's not like he's left the country. He went to the beach with his mama, but we miss the little cuss, I'm telling you. Isn't that funny, Diane, how we miss them? 
And there's nothing will cure that except keep him for about five hours. And then, uh, then we'll miss them for not coming and getting him. But we love him to pieces. But we had a little time on our hands tonight. I took Deb to my study. And I want to tell you something. I'm not bragging. I give all the glory to God. She almost complimented me. She did. She came close. I, she came close. So I'm encouraged. But I, I've been going through that study, and I've, and I've found some of my, my old Bibles. And uh, this is one of my favorite old Bibles. And uh, something about your swords. Different Bibles. Now, we don't worship the object of the Bible in the place of God. And a lot of liberals over the years have tried to have tried to twist that and they say you uh, conservative uh, theologically uh, narrow-minded people you worship the bible i worship the god who inspired the bible but i want to say something to you how could you worship the god who inspired the bible and not have a love for the bible your own self Thy word, O Lord, is settled in heaven forever and forever. But I picked up this Bible today, and God just really put it on my heart earlier today that uh, somebody was going to get some help tonight from this scripture. I love this, Psalm 116, verse 1 and following. I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice. And my supplications. Well, you could go on with that, couldn't you? I love the Lord because. I remember we used to sing when I was a kid. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because. He first loved me. That's theology. That's doctrine. Years and years after that, there was another song that said, When he was on the cross. I was on his mind. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplication. Supplication is a, is a type of, of prayer. It's a type of petitioning of God's people unto God. Do I ever pray and it feels like my prayer's not even getting above the ceiling? Yeah, but you know what I do? I just keep praying. Because it's not about how we feel that determines whether or not something is real. But it's by our faith in the book that God has furnished. For us to grow in and to get spiritual nourishment from. Verse 2, because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. Heard somebody say, you better be careful when you say what you're going to do. You don't know what you're going to do. And I get that. That's true to a certain extent. But there are some things you better go ahead and make up your mind. There are some things you, you can and will and must say and commit with resolve that you're going to do. I will call upon him as long as I live. Now listen to what the psalmist said. He said, the sorrows of death compassed me and the pains of hell. And some translations translate this and, and it's not a bad translation, the grave. We believe in a literal hell, but this is, this is talking about the darkness and the imminence of the place of death. The pains of, of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then, listen to what he said. 
called I upon the name of the Lord. And it's, and it's not just enough that he told us that he prayed, but he told us what he prayed. Oh Lord, I beseech thee, I beg of you, oh God, I plead with you, deliver my soul. Do you realize tonight that there is a battle royal for your soul? Now, if your soul's been saved, it can never be lost again. But the enemy is going to do warfare against your soul time and time and time and time and time again. And you get that tonight. You get that tonight. The greatest challenge for me as a pastor is to warn people of that. And as I warn people of that, I, I, watch, I watch people prosper. And I watch them do well in terribly. And most people don't handle prosperity that good. Most people forget God. And they forget his word. And they forget the need to be desperately dependent upon his word. Until they get in a desperate place. And the greatest challenge is to be kind and gracious and patient and and sweet and humble and kind. And say, I tried my best. I tried my best to tell you. Here's what I'm saying. You don't have to wait until your soul is going down for the last time. To enjoy the mercy of God. My goodness gracious. Verse 5. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. There's not a one of us tonight that would be in this room were it not for the mercy of God. Verse 6 really encourages me. The Lord preserveth the simple. My goodness, my goodness. The Lord preserveth the simple. The preserving power of God, the keeping power of God, is second to no other power in this world. I'll, I'll never forget um, way, 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 way back in the day. It's been ever ever bit of 30 years ago. I was getting ready to... Uh, to go out of town. I was going to Cary, North Carolina to preach in a revival meeting. And to say that we were in warfare would be Putting it mildly. I felt like I was between the devil and the deep blue sea. Had a wife and little bitty babies. Little bitty children. And uh, I, had, I had some situations going on. Where some people just literally abhorred what I was preaching. I know that shocks you. I know it does. Really doesn't bother me now. I feel like I'm doing something wrong every once in a while. If I don't have somebody just gets mad at me, I want to say, get mad at me. Have I backslid? But every once in a while, somebody, it just blesses me if they'll just come out the door and they won't speak and they won't look. I'll say, well, I must be doing something right. But when I was young, oh, it, it just, it tore my soul out. It tore my soul out. But I was getting ready to get in my car, and, and there was a, a little old saint called. And she said, Preacher Keith, I've got a, a word from God for you. 
And she gave me 2 Thessalonians 3, 3. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. That reminds me of this verse that I just read. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low and he helped me. Listen, we can persevere because he preserves. Were it not for his preservation, there would be no perseverance. That that ought to help somebody tonight. I'm going to persevere. I'm going to continue. And so are you because he keeps us. He didn't just save you, but he keeps you safe. Verse 7, return unto thy rest. O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I love this verse 9. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I love verse 10. I believe. Therefore, have I spoken. I want to ask you something. Do you believe the word of God tonight enough to speak it? Don't, 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 don't go to quoting me or some other pastor or some other preacher. If all you're doing is is quoting our words. You see, our words are just like your words. They're mortal words. But the words of God are the words that we speak based on our belief system. I believed, therefore have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. We can say some things in our haste, can't we? That are just not true. Not all men are liars. A lot are. But not all men are liars. There are some people who still stand for truth. Elijah had to be reminded of that. And then verse 12, he says, What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits? Toward me. Psalm 103 talks about he has loaded us down with benefits. When people are in the secular world and they're going to get a job, it's a big deal when they talk about benefits. What are benefits? Listen, folks, there's many, many benefits that come to the child of God for being saved. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? In other words, God's been good to me. How am I going to respond to him? I could never pay him back. I'll never be able to pay him back. That's not what it's about. We don't do anything we do for God in hopes to pay him back. That's not why he's been good to us. He's been good to us because he's God. He hadn't been good to us because we deserve it. But he's been good to us because he's God. But we need to acknowledge that. Listen to what he said in verse 13. I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I want to I give you some homework tonight, okay? When you go home, find you a quiet place. If, 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 if you're married, have, have a time of prayer together. But listen, a lot of you are not married. But even if you're married... Get by yourself. Many of you tonight are single folk. But you're not alone. Get with God. And call upon the name of the Lord. If you need to write it down like I talked about Sunday. Write it down. Call upon the name of the Lord. Look at verse 14. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. I know a lot of people who make vows and then they break vows. 
Ecclesiastes says that it's better to not even make a vow to God than to make it and then break it. Verse 15, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Forty years ago when my dad died, my pastor and a deacon came to tell me what had happened. My sister was at work at our church. She worked in the daycare center. My mother was in Greenville and she had to have somebody that went and got her and they brought her home and so on and so forth. Well, we had to go tell my sister. And a deacon went with me. He drove me over there. And I, the first death notification I ever did was for my sister to tell him our dad had died. But on the way over there, that deacon, he, he took his little New Testament. But I'll never forget this. He showed me Psalm 116, verse 15. Never forget this as long as I live. And he said, Keith, I want to tell you something. He said, there are things worse than death. But then he said, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. How could, how could, how could death for a saved person, that's what that's talking about. How could the, the death of a saved person be precious? You say, well, it's because they're in a better place. Well, it's so much more than the place. It's the person with whom they'll be with forever and ever and ever and ever. And it's the pain from which they have been delivered. You say, but this is talking about saints. And great day in the morning, I've lived in the South my whole life. And I've heard it said over and over and over and over and over. And every time I've heard it said over and over and over and over and over, I've come back and preached and preached and preached and preached. And sometimes I wonder, am I doing any good? Is anybody in the whole world even listening? If there ever was a saint, I tell you what, that'd be in Kluge, was a saint. Uh, being with and that David Bryant. If I, I want to tell you something, if there's ever been a saint, that Diane Campbell was a saint. Long, long. No, we never could get Diane to quit from chewing tobacco and smoking and drinking and dancing. She was rough. She was rough as she could be. But but you know what? They're right there at the end. I believe she got right and. In them last eight hours she lived. She is about as close to the Lord as anybody ever. Of course she was, she was uh, unconscious. <laughs> I just want to encourage you Diane. This just, just won't be a blessing. But you see. A saint is somebody who's been set apart. For a purpose. Now. now and I'm not hating on them. Don't, don't get sideways with and don't get your nose out of joint when I say this but the Catholic Church and that's a whole other story but after a person dies they have to be brought up in, 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 in a Catholic Church business meeting I don't want to ever be in a Catholic Church business meeting I want to go a step further I don't ever want to be in a Baptist Church business meeting say amen right there I'm done with them. Any of them. The only business meetings I'm going to is when Debbie calls one. I'll show up for that. Because I want to stay over there at Lemon Creek. Say amen right there. But this is what I'm telling you. You do not become a saint based on man's affirmation. But you become a saint based on God's salvation. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Y'all need to listen faster. We about out of time. Let's pick it up, guys. Listen faster. Verse 16. Oh, 
Lord, truly, I am thy servant. I am thy servant. He was excited about it. He said it twice. And the son of thine handmaid, thou hast loosed my bonds. Listen to what he said. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. Listen, I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the privacy of my own house while I'm watching church on live stream. That's not what he says, is it? Boy, it got quiet up in here. That's not what he said. He said, I will pay my vows unto the Lord now. In the back of my truck while I'm out on the lake. Trying to catch some fish on Sunday morning. But, but don't worry about being out there fishing on Sunday morning. One guy told me, he said, preacher, if I, had, I wouldn't have been in church anyway. He said, my wife was sick. After Bible study last night, I went up to the clock, picked us up some stuff, and I was waiting on our order, and I came back home, and we was eating at home. I was telling Deb about this while ago. There's a man, a complete stranger. Jimmy introduced me to him, and I believe the only reason Jimmy introduced me to him, he wanted to go on. And I, was talk, and I started witnessing to the guy, and he said, uh, this, that, that, everything, and so on and so forth. And I was trying to get somewhere with him. Have you ever been to the clock of Greer? On Tuesday night, you can't park. Listen, you buy, have to park down at City Hall or out on Wade Hampton. I mean, they've, they've got people, you know, seating you at the clock in Greer. Half the city goes. And I asked this guy, I said, where do you go to church? He said, I don't, I don't. He said, I'm staying out of the crowd. I started to say, turn your radio on. Houston, we got a problem. I'm not making fun. Listen, I've had the virus. Debbie had the virus. A lot of y'all have had the virus. But I want to tell you something. Folks, it's time that the body of Christ rises up in the name of Jesus and says, I ain't scared. Anymore. And if I'm going to die, I'm going to heaven. And for those that are especially afraid of being around crowds, I'd say, say, come on Wednesday night. <laughs> Praise God. Listen. I will call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Why? Because I'm not ashamed. i got two minutes. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. I'm going to read one more chapter, and I can do it in less than a minute. Look at verse 1 of chapter 117. Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise him. All you people, for his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. That's not Jimmy calling from the clock, is it? I'm just kidding you. Don't be embarrassed. Don't. Be. <laughs> That's some of them people I was preaching about. They done heard about it. He's reading the Bible better than I am. He sure is, but that, that's okay. That, that is okay. But I'll, I'll t Nancy, I'll give you credit for one thing. At, at, least, at least you didn't do like some people. Their phone's gone off. I've seen people. I've seen people try their best to act like it wasn't them. I <laughs> saw a woman one time take But anyway, it's all right. <laughs> that, uh, 
Jim, she's going to get you home in a minute. She's going to get you and y'all get each other home. Why don't you stand up tonight? How many of you got something out of reading the Bible? I'm talking about theirs. Amen there. And how many of you got a little something out of, out of what I read? Hey, you take this, the Word of God, and you go on it. And you meditate on it day and night. And Joshua 1.8 says that you will have good success. Success is not, it's not how much money you make. Success is not the kind of car you drive. It's not what you wear. But success is knowing and doing the will of God. Can I do this on, thank you, thank you, Jason. On Wednesday night, would you hold up your hands, please, and can I just speak the blessing of God on your life? May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you in a mighty, mighty way. And may he give unto you peace. And may he do this in the strong and in the mighty name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit of God. And all of God's people said, Amen. God bless you and good night. I love you guys. Thank you. I appreciate you.